Hi, welcome to True Creeps, where the stories are true and the creeps are real. We'll cover stories from grotesque gore to the possibly plausible paranormal, to horrifying history, to tense and terrible true crime, and everything else that goes bump in the night. We're your hosts, Amanda. And I'm Lindsay. And we want you to join us while we creep. We cover mature topics. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, everyone. Today, we are going to talk about one of my favorite topics, and that is haunted houses. So we've had a ton of episodes about haunted places and objects and that sort of thing, but we haven't really touched on the average haunted house. I love the idea of just an average haunted house, that it's like a mundane one. Yes. And I also, I do love that you're like, I love a haunted house. And now you are pro in my next home, I want ghosties. But that and when you were in your home buying process, the last time <laughs> around, you were like, no ghosts, no rocking chairs. I was stressed that I was going to get like fucking Amityville accidentally and be stuck in it. That would suck. Yeah. So you had like first home buyer's nerves, but spooky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was like, no, in my luck, it's going to murder our whole family. Cool for us. And I was, yeah, you know, like pets and stuff, too. <laughs> There are haunted dolls that we categorically were like, we're actually never going to talk about this one because some people have reported pet issues and it's just not worth it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And we'll talk about it later, but someone could potentially be selling a house like the most spooky haunted house ever. And they don't have to disclose that in a lot of places. So it's like, who could know? But we'll talk more on that in a bit. But today, what we're going to talk about is a few houses that have been known to be haunted. One even keeps coming back on the market. Wonder why. A little bit of legal history about a particular haunted home. And if sellers even need to disclose to you that you are actually buying a haunted home. So a lot. Big agenda today. Just a few things on the docket. Yeah. So the first one we're going to discuss is called the Frank Shaver Allen House. And a little bit of information. This is actually on Zillow right now. So it's located at 608 Morgan Street in Joliet, Illinois. And it's only listed for $199,900. Any house under $200,000 is a bargain to me. That is like upright. Seriously. And it's 3,200 square feet. It has five bedrooms and two bathrooms. So just saying. It's a steal. (laughs) I think that Zillow should also have a ghost per square foot ratio <laughs> with that square footage. And I thought that would make things better. Zillow, reach out to us. We have ideas. Plucky would have a very high ghost to like square footage ratio. <laughs> I would just want like horseshoes in the clip clop areas. <laughs> in the clip clop zone, one might say. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. So this particular The clip clop quarter. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I had to interrupt you to say that. It was worth it. It was worth it. So this particular house has recently been renovated. And it does look pretty. But in my opinion, it looks like it still needs some more work. It looks like a rush job when I'm looking at particular photos of it. You know, like when people are like, I'm going to flip this house real quick and sell it to get rid of it. That's what I get. I also get that vibe. It's also that when you look at the first photo on Zillow, Mm -hmm. it's very much edited with a filter and stylized. And to me, that makes me immediately suspicious. I think the first picture drew me in. Oh, it does draw you in because it looks compelling. But you can tell they've definitely doctored the image is what I'm saying. for sure. The sky and yeah. Yeah. And like, I want the worst photos of a house. If it can look good in terrible photos, <laughs> it can look good. On my, <laughs> what is it called? On my, my Mercari, where I'm selling old clothes that I just need to get rid of, I'm not taking the time to make cute photos. It looks like a hostage photo. It's bad. The clothing, <laughs> I'm like, the clothing looks like how it looks. I'm not trying to make it look better than it is. Here's what it is. Buy my wares or don't. Yeah. Now, when it's like my product photos for like, oh, like I made this thing. Look, that's different. But this like, look at my old shirt. You want this? That's how house photos should be. Look at my old house. You want this? <laughs> that's what she puts at the bottom of every image. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. Obviously. <laughs> look at my old shirt. You want this? <laughs> 
It's like he's making a killing on Bakari right now, too. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not I'm not doing bad. It's been a minute since I've sold anything because I have a lot I have to list, but I've sold enough stuff where I'm like, oh, this is worth my time. So what I've learned is hostage photos of clothes is what sells. People like it. <laughs> People are into it. <laughs> well, this whole, when you're just scrolling the pictures without opening the particular photo, it looks great. But then when you open it and make it bigger, you're like, yikes, like I see a lot going on that you don't see when it's a small photo. But it is a pretty home. So I'll give it that. However, the renovation is said to have triggered even more supernatural activity. So, you know, no big deal. Doesn't it always? (laughs) Yeah, if we've learned anything from haunted house movies, it's don't change a thing. You'll piss everything off. Most of the time, I should say. We'll talk about another home in a bit. But this house is considered one of the most haunted homes in Illinois and normally comes up on like a top 10 list for the most haunted houses in the U.S., Some realtor posts that I was able to find from 2017 said that daytime showings of the home are, quote, strongly recommended. No, just no. (laughs) I feel like I'm not generally like, you know what I would like to go look at a house? The dead of night. When we were looking at houses and when I've looked at places to rent before, like I've gone and driven in that area at night just to see like, Mm -hmm. what are people doing at night? Because I know in Jacksonville, when I lived there, you absolutely wanted to see what does their parking lot look like? Is it completely full where you won't be able to find parking? Yeah. Are there people like working on their cars at night? Is it really loud? Because I was in law school at the time. So I was like, I need a place where I can actually sleep. And so that was a concern. I feel like most people are going during the daytime and they just don't need to say that. Right. Just schedule during the day. (laughs) All I hear is, I am scared to show you this property at night, so I will be there during the day. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) I've heard of people asking to see a home at night, but normally it's like, I want to hear the train and how loud it actually is when it comes through at 5 p.m. That makes sense. Or things like that. Like, in my bedroom, will I be able to sleep? It's on a busy road. What does it look like at this time? But not just recommended to show it only during the day. So I thought that was funny. I would love if you could come at 3 a.m. and show me the house. Do not mind the cameras and the equipment that I brought with me. This is a typical house hunting (laughs) equipment. No worries. You know what? I bet we could get away with that. That'll work. Solid. (laughs) So the rumor of the home is that the ghosts pretty much run off everyone that tries to live there. And so far... I mean, looking at the sales history, it seems like it's pretty much worked because it's been on the market every couple of years from what I can see. I feel like that there has to come a time when you decide that it's just going to be spooky tourism. Right. Airbnb spooky house. Done. Yeah. Look, ghosts, you don't want normal tenants? Fine. We're going to have people come in and annoy the hell out of you. And then we'll see if you can behave and a <laughs> normal people can live there. Just live in their life. <laughs> no, they love the chaos. They're like, bring it on, Airbnb. <laughs> They're like, I am about to ruin this person's life. <laughs> <laughs> you were scared of like secret cameras and like doors before? Nah, this is it. Mm-hmm. Well, this would be like a, do you want to see a ghost? Here's how. And then there's people that stayed in the church and plucky. Yeah. Won't be mad. <laughs> like, there were no ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> all comes back to plucky everything goes back to plucky right now but you know it ebbs it flows let's talk about the history of this house so amanda earlier called it the frank shaver allen house and that's because that's who built it (laughs) yeah he also designed several school buildings and a church it's the christ episcopal church and his buildings are stunning and his style was the richardsonian romanesque style which okay (laughs) I looked up what that was because I was like, I don't know styles. I just know I like Victorian and weird. Yeah. They're like gothic, gorgeous schools. You know, when you see a Halloween movie and the kids go to a high school and you're like, no schools look like that. Those are his schools that look like that. One of my uh, my undergrad kind of looks similar to this. This looks like old school. Think old Castle school. Yes. It's this. Love it. I like it. It's the... um. It's the professional version of a Victorian house. (laughs) Yes. Love it. This home, though, looks cottage-like, but everything else it looks like he designed was gothic-looking. Yeah, yeah. And that church that we had talked about just a second ago 
unfortunately, was destroyed in a fire in 2006, so most of it is gone. But anyway, back to the house. It was built in 1887, and I would say she looks pretty good Yeah, for being a solid century and a half-ish old, right? Yeah. Don't like the idea of that, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, nevertheless, also just a solid century before I was born. Exactly. Interesting. <laughs> so it's perfect. Perfect. It's meant for you. Perfect. It's meant for me. So it has a limestone arch. And we've talked before about how limestone has been linked to the paranormal. And when we say arch, I really want you to think like curve because it's the entrance. It's like stone, but it's not. It's like a round arch, not an oblong arch. Yeah. Which I think is what makes it feel like cottage or kind of hobbit-y, if you will. Mm -hmm. In the roof. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about some of the ghosts and paranormal activity that's been reported. People have reported seeing a child, a nanny, and an elderly woman who is believed to have died from a disease. Frank Shaver Allen himself... And then residents have also reported hearing disembodied voices and have seen random fires in the home that disappear without leaving damages, which that would be creepy. Pretty creepy. The fires makes me think of Bridgewater Triangle. Yes, me too. And of course, Plucky with the woman who lived near the bridge and caught herself on fire with her gin and pipe. But anywho, can you imagine of all things to see a phantom fire that is not real. Just the pure terror of thinking a room is on fire and then it's not. Right? How many times do you react to that? You know, because what if it was real the last time you don't react? Yes. And then you lose your home. I feel like you'd have to be like, is there smoke? Is there smoke? I'd have signs that were decorative that say like, is there smoke? <laughs> Wherever I normally see the fires. <laughs> loopy font. Yeah, loopy font. Beautiful. You know me. Tons of loopy font signs in my house. I don't have a <laughs> satanic furby tea party in my dining room no one does that's fine who would have that <laughs> who there's also been some investigations in the home believe a paranormal experience did an investigation and they posted a youtube video with their findings and when they did the house was on the market and this is around six years ago they brought an entire team including a psychic and they captured various evps and one of their cameras captured two anomalies next to one of their team members. Interesting. There's some stuff. Some stuff's happening. And it seems like their video comes up a lot, even with some of the like sales stuff that I was able to find on it. Their video is linked to it. It was kind of funny. Well, if you're trying to sell this home, a casual Google search is going to pull up results. You might as well just give people a video that you approve of so that this way they've already seen it. Mm -hmm. But so Mary Ellen Ashenbritter, who was a journalist for the Juliet Herald News, had some experiences in the home as well. In 1974, she wrote a column for a publication for Herald News called House of the Week. And normally it was newer homes, but she decided that she wanted to do a historical home. So she chose this one. But she was told that the owners of the home were very private and that the house was haunted. And that wasn't really something she believed in, but the owner said if she came with someone who had expertise in detecting paranormal presences, she could do the article. I like how they're like, you can come, but can you figure out what's going on? Yeah. Like, if you're going to come in, there better be some benefit to us. I mean, that's fair, though. You want to write about my home? Help me fix it. It's fair, but I love that that's what's getting them to handle it. Do you know what I mean? They're like, yeah, there's hella ghosts up in here. We're good with it. But if you're going to come write an article, can you come figure out what's going on in here? Yes, because they are having a lot of issues. We'll talk about them in a minute, too. Also, that's another T-shirt. There's hella ghosts up in here. <laughs> Yes, I love it. Oh my gosh, yes. Put that in our notes. <laughs> so Mary Ellen, which also, it always is a woman with two names when she's with the presence of ghosts, right? In a story of people who are talking about hauntings, always a woman with two names. But Mary Ellen decided to bring some psychics with her when she went to meet with them. And we'll talk about the family in a few minutes. But we've searched all over the place for the article that she wrote, and we can't find it. But some of our other sources reference it, and they talk about the fact that Mary discussed that there was a lot of paranormal activity in the home. And that's, again, really interesting because she wasn't a believer. Right, right. In 2017, Mary Ellen hosted events that were called The Ghost of F.S. Allen. 
dramatic. And in the events, she discussed her experience with the psychics that went with her to the home and the, the experiences that she had had. I wish that we could find the videos, but we can't. Yeah. And unfortunately, Mary Ellen passed away last year in 2022. Right. I scoured the event invites and stuff because it was like a Facebook mm-hmm. event invite and no one posted anything about it. But she was like answering people about how interesting the event was and like how it changed her thinking and it's wild and all of that. But yeah, no one posted about it, which I thought was weird. Yeah. So the family that lived in the home when Mary wrote her article had been having issues with their unwanted house guests as soon as they moved in and started decorating. So it was like pretty quick. They had a young son who began seeing a little boy and his nanny. And normally it happened when he was playing alone which I can totally relate to because my little brother did the same thing whenever he'd play alone. He'd like talk to someone. However, you know how I feel about ghost labor. Like, I don't think that you should have to die doing your job and then be unpaid forever. That's true. If it's his nanny. I would love if this was like his cousin who came over and hung out with him or perhaps his mom, because I don't know how you would know that it wasn't his mom. (laughs) Right. I guess that's fair. But I mean, like some nannies get super attached and that becomes their family. So maybe it's that. It's still ghost labor. And it still upsets me because I don't want people to be stuck in their profession. I know we very much promote ghost therapists, Lindsay. Yeah, you know how I feel about that as well. You need to go to this home, sit down and tell her you are now dismissed. Yeah, look, he's a ghost. What's the worst that can happen now? (laughs) Yeah. You don't need to watch this little boy anymore. And little boy, clearly something happened and you died. So that's not great. But like move it along because Gertrude has been here for 85 years. (laughs) I like her name. Let this woman fucking move on. Timothy. Perfect. (laughs) Well, little boy, when he play alone, his parents are like, oh, it's just his imagination. The standard ghost story. But then he started describing details about the people he was seeing. And he was saying disturbing things like how the little boy and his nanny wanted the little boy to join them and be his forever playmate. Well, we don't like that. No. Maybe it isn't Timothy holding Gertrude for the past 85 years. Maybe Gertrude is holding Timothy. I revise my statement, but still thoroughly believe that both should have ghost therapy. Yes. Yes. Agreed. So the family also began seeing apparitions of an elderly woman. <laughs> And this made me unsettled. (laughs) She would suddenly appear with a sinister look in her eyes, laugh, and like... Oh my god, I love it so much. When she laughed, it wasn't just like a little laugh, it was like a full-on cackle. (laughs) And then she'd disappear. (laughs) She's such a shipper and I love it. (laughs) If I ever do haunt someone, that is absolutely what I want to do. I want to do... My weird ass, I want to like look at someone, give them a spooky look, laugh, and then just be like, I'm out. (laughs) I imagine her being in a rocking chair too, of course. She's not. There's no reason to believe that, but fuck no. Oh, in my brain, she's like (laughs) risky business sliding into a room. (laughs) And she's like wearing pajamas that are either one up to her chin and down to her wrist and down to her knees or old timey silk pajamas that are like a top and a bottom, you know, with curlers in her hair, but she slides in. (laughs) Great. That would be, that would be excellent. That's top tier ghosting. It is top tier ghosting. Well, whatever she was doing, it sounds horrifying. So of course the standard haunting doors would randomly swing open and then they'd slam And it would happen at all hours of the day and night. Things would also be thrown from shelves. And sometimes when it would happen, it would be almost like they would float for a moment and then crash, which is not nice. Maybe they have cats, like ghost cats. (laughs) But how would it float for a moment? Because they can like extra fuck with things rather than just like knocking it off. They like get to see your face and it's like, oh, oh, it would be a shame if something were to happen to this very breakable Thing crash. <laughs> Cats are such assholes. <laughs> That's cat behavior. It is. It is. They also heard banging on the walls, sometimes so hard that it felt like the house was shaking. Sometimes they would see the phantom fires that we talked about earlier. And the family had to live there for a decade 
before they were able to leave, which is really sad because like a lot of the stories that we talk about too, a lot of people in the movies and things like that, they're always like, well, why don't they just move? And not everyone has the ability to just move and they, they weren't able to. Yeah. So once they finally did, the house actually sat empty for a while because of its reputation. Over the years, some have said that the activity has dwindled down a bit. Just, you know, the occasional disembodied voice, cold spot, weird noise. But the activity began to pick up again after its newest remodel. So who could know what's happening now? I do find it fascinating that the family wasn't doing much until Mary Ellen wanted to write this story. And like, I get hiring psychics costs money and all, but I find that interesting that it didn't seem like they had efforts that we are aware of. Maybe it was the time, but still. I feel like that's still something, right? Even if you were filled with shame, maybe years later, you would be saying like, we try these things. Yeah. And it was really weird because I saw a lot of places that talked a little bit about the family or that would say the main story is that the kid would see the kid and the nanny in the forever playmate thing. But there wasn't much on them. I had to dig for a while to even find a couple more examples of what they were seeing. And then, like I said, Mary Ellen's article, I couldn't find anywhere either. So it just seemed really weird that like a lot of it isn't as easily found. Again, it's the 70s, but we found older stuff easier before. So I don't know. Maybe the realtors are getting rid of shit because they don't Hmm. want this house to not sell. I don't know. My guess. So after knowing this information and seeing its Zillow listing, would you buy this home? If I was in the market to buy a second home, I would absolutely buy this house. Like 10 out of 10 would buy this house. Right. And convert it into ghost tourism because it is asking for it. They clearly do not want people living there routinely. And why not? Right. It is a very pretty house. I know <laughs> Lindsay and I have looked at it for like a week now talking about it. Oh, I have serious and opinions like the- about some of the rooms. I have <laughs> I have like Could notes down off? because I was like, <laughs> I wouldn't live in this house because there is a certain room that some of the details bring me so much anger that I just can't. But if you want to hear more details, stay with us after the credits, because we do a little bit of a walkthrough. and We talk about why the closets are so creepy. And how they're suspiciously wooden. Suspicious. So we're moving on. We're moving to New York now. So the next house that we're going to talk about, it's interesting for a couple of reasons, but we'll get into those in a second. And the house is one Levada place in Nyack, New York. And it's been on the market a few times over the years, but it was sold in 2021 last. And this one is a little more pricey. It's $1.7 million. And it's an eight bedroom house with five bathrooms. And it's just a touch over 4,600 square feet, according to its Zillow listing. And the property has a bit of a famous past because it's the first house to be declared legally haunted. And again, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. It's also very close to Sleepy Hollow. So it's a 10 to 15 minute drive away. And it's gorgeous. It's like this kind of like pale baby blue color. And it's I think it looks kind of dreamy. It does. Yeah. It's like a light and airy Victorian house. And it was built in the 1890s. It's on the Hudson River. Mm hmm. Helen Ackley wrote about the hauntings, and one of her stories was published in Reader's Digest in the 1970s, and it was titled Our Haunted House on the Hudson. And when the Ackley family first saw the house in the late 1960s, it had been vacant for seven years, and they were moving from Maryland, so it took a little bit for them to finish their move. And before their four children arrived at their new home, Helen was questioned by the neighborhood kids. They wanted to know if they had kids, which is pretty typical, but they also had a lot of questions about the house itself. She offered them a tour, and two of the kids decided against it, and the others giggled. They told her the house was haunted. Gives me American Horror Story vibes, right? Like the first season? Yes. It also feels very, like, 1970s. It's like, hello, strange children. Would you like to walk around my house? <laughs> yeah. Today, they would be like, stranger danger, or... yeah. Can I film it? One of the two. Who could know? No in between. No in between at all. So Helen was at home when a plumber was working on the water system and he asked Helen, are you planning to be here long? She said she had to go pick up her husband, George, at 430 and asked if he had run into a problem. And the plumber, Bob, said, it's not that, Mrs. Ackley. I keep hearing footsteps on the stairs and walking around overhead. I must have run up and down those stairs six times the other day, but I couldn't find anybody. And he said, I'm ready to go now, 
but I don't want to leave you here alone. Well, first off, that's incredibly kind. Secondly, I like that this is the subsequent visit to this house that he's telling her this. Like, not the day where there was a bunch of fucking footsteps and no one to be found, but days later. Right. It sounded like they were fixing up the home. So he had been there a few times. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying is like, tell me the first time. This also, this makes me think of the watcher. Yes. I would be horrified at that statement. I'd be like, uh... I would love for you to stay. Right. Okay. Well, now I'm never here alone. I'm going to go someplace else. (laughs) Fuck this house. Anywhere that's not here. (laughs) But Helen was not worried. And she said she needed to get used to being in the home alone, which is true if she was going to move into it, you know? Yeah. So that night, George and Helen were getting ready for bed, and she told him about the neighborhood kids and what Bob said. And George didn't seem phased. But when Helen went to turn off the hall light, he instructed her to leave it on, which was out of the norm for him. And she kind of teased him and said, since when have you slept with the light on? And he said, since the first night they moved in and that he did not want to discuss it. Ooh, that gave me chills. George, we're going to need to fucking discuss it. (laughs) Right? (laughs) We're going to need to talk about this, George, because now I'm not sleeping and neither are you. Right? (laughs) He doesn't want to discuss it. That's cute, George. Right. That's well, George, cute. you're not sleeping tonight because we are fucking discussing it till 5 a.m. when the sun comes up. <laughs> I know it's 1970, <laughs> but I will need to have discussed this until forever. We're talking about this. Anyway, Helen said that she only got good vibes from the home and was fine with hearing random footsteps. So chill. She's breezy. Yeah. And she even said it was such a vigilant patrolman on duty for 24 hours a day. Yeah. Uh, I love this reframing of it. I'm not done talking about how just chill she is. <laughs> She's very chill. And we'll find out, too, that she, like, talks to them. They have little chats. She's fine with it. Okay. Okay. I love that for her. Like, me and Marge. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They didn't freak her out. In her article, she said something like, occasionally they were scary, but overall it wasn't it wasn't a big deal occasionally they were scary (laughs) i forget what she said she said something like occasionally they'd get a little freaked out but overall yeah she didn't get bad vibes it was fine so her article you can still find it online it's a good article but that's where we got a lot of the information about the haunting she went into detail in the article about a couple events that happened to the family with their house guests But a few things that would happen is in the dining room, a light fixture cord, it would just start swaying when there wasn't any air movement. And then all of a sudden it would just stop like a hand grabbed it. There's French doors in the home and they would just fly open. Windows would also open. Items would disappear, which made me think of March. Figures were also seen in various places of the house, which mm, that that doesn't make me happy. One night in the wintertime, while George was out of town, Helen was up. It sounded like a little late. And she says that she was standing in the dining room and she was admiring the lights over the river because their backyard is like literally the Hudson River. Looks like there's like a outdoor area, but then right after the porch and the grass, it's a little fenced yard and then it's just the river. So I'm sure it's like absolutely gorgeous at night. As she was standing there, though, she all of a sudden got a chill and she said that the hairs on her neck stood up. And it felt like someone was standing right there next to her, which, ugh, could you imagine that feeling? I don't like that. <laughs> but she she kept her cool because she looked, she didn't see anyone, but she's like, I know someone was there. She then thought it would be best to try to speak with whoever was standing by her. And she said, it's beautiful on the river, isn't it? She described the event as feeling scared but not feeling like she was being threatened in any way. Once she spoke, though, she felt better, and she still felt the visitor next to her. After a few minutes, she wanted to go to bed. So she started to walk away, but she felt like the presence was walking with her. So she continued with, thank you for sharing the view with me. I'm going to bed now. Good night. And once she said that and she continued walking, she didn't feel the presence as she walked into her room. So the ghost was like, all right, good night. Have a good night. Sleep well. (laughs) And left her alone. I love this for Helen. I think Helen is one of those people in the world who is easygoing. Mm -hmm. My therapist gave me this worksheet and it was like, be easygoing. And I was like, what does that mean? How do you do (laughs) that? How do you just be chill? I don't know. You have to act like Helen. She's just like, ghosts, no bigs. We're just staring at the Hudson together. 
<laughs> what would Helen do? <laughs> what would Helen do? What would this Nally Gaster do? What would Helen do? When you're really stressed out, I want you to think, how would Helen handle the situation? And when someone's <laughs> fucked with you or your horse-sized egg, you think, what would this Nally Gaster do? Exactly. Exactly. You need to really think about the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Because Snally Gaster is not appropriate for all situations, and Helen is not appropriate for all situations. Correct. Including, I think, perhaps a haunting. <laughs> <laughs> so, Helen's oldest daughter, Cynthia, who was 15 at the time, had one of the scariest encounters. So, according to the article, it didn't even scare her, which she's like her mom, easy breezy. Mm-hmm. So, Cynthia wasn't a morning person, but she was starting to get up very early and get get dressed before her parents even woke up. And she started doing that because every morning her bed would shake. And if she tried to ignore it, it would shake even harder. Right. And it would happen at the same time every morning. Honestly, that's the best fucking alarm clock. Hell no. (laughs) Hell no. You can't sleep through it. Yeah, but like a phantom just fucking shaking your bed. Get the fuck up. I need that for Mike, actually. Yeah, see, the more we're saying it, the more you're like, maybe. (laughs) But so... Cynthia was more annoyed that she wouldn't be able to sleep in during Christmas break than anything else. And so her and her mom decided that she should try to explain to the ghost that she wanted to sleep and didn't want the bed shake alarm clock. And I love that rational thinking, right? So she's just like, you should just talk to them. You could tell that this is a family who has very good communication skills. Right. Something's bothering you. You should talk to them. You should confront them. Let's have a discussion about it. Good for you, Helen. You're killing it. I love it. So during winter break, Cynthia's bed never shook after she talked to the ghost out loud about what she wanted. It's kind of cute. On a few occasions, she saw an outline of a thin hooded figure, medium height, that she was pretty sure was a woman in her room. Casual. Casually. Okay. I mean, I do like that she was like, if you're going to voice a boundary, I'm going to respect it. Yeah. She's like, I love that for you. I love a woman who advocates for herself. So All of the other kids, except for one, had their beds shaken at different times. And the one that didn't was Kara. And that was because she was always a morning person. So she was already getting up earlier. And Kara had her own experiences, though, and would often feel like someone was sitting on the couch in the living room. Which, like, you know, when you're sitting and you could, like, feel someone sit down, Mm -hmm. that would, again, freak me out. Yeah. So Helen also saw a figure, but with a bit more detail. And she was painting the living room when she felt someone watching her. And she was the only person at home. So she was like, bizarre. And she was on a stepladder painting when it happened. And she said, I hope you like the color. Hope you're pleased with what we're doing to the house. It certainly must have been lovely when it was first built. So sweet. I mean, Helen is like killing it with these ghosts. She is perhaps their ghost therapist. Yeah. She's saying all of the right things. And also, like, if you are living in a home with a ghost... Chances are they are not happy that they are dead and that there's so much change happening. So, like, it would be kind to be kind in the same way that, like, say you lived with, like, a relative and you bought the house from them because they could no longer afford it. Right. And they're like, you're like, but you can live with me. And you're like, but I'm going to fuck this mother up. And you paint all the walls like fuchsia and you knock out like the cabinets that they hand built. They would probably be upset. Right. Just like I think a ghost would be. But so anyway, she said this sweet thing to the ghost. And when she looked back, Helen saw a man sitting midair by the fireplace. And she went into a lot of details about what he was wearing, how he was sitting, and even that he smiled at her before fading away. And she thought that that meant that he was pleased with what she was doing to the house, which is kind of sweet. Yeah, I think they just liked being acknowledged, it seemed. Yeah, I mean, what I think is interesting here is that this ghost is clearly sitting in a chair But you're not seeing the chair. Mm -hmm. There's no ghost chair. It's simply man sitting on the air. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So people outside the family also had experiences with the ghosts. Her cousin Alfred and his wife Ingrid and their daughter came to visit in 1974. Ingrid woke up in the middle of the night to see a silhouette of a man in the French doors. Then she saw that he was dressed in a long jacket from the revolutionary period And he also was wearing a white powdered wig. Okay. Okay. George Washington, get out of my room. (laughs) So the man walked over to the bed and sat down at the foot of the bed. And he thought it, you know, would be cool to just open up his book 
and just start reading. And he opened a phantom book that looked like it was glowing from the inside. Hmm. And from what I understand, she was in bed and like his back was to her and he was just sitting on the edge of the bed. And it looked like he was looking for something in the book. So he was like quickly flipping through the pages and then closed it and then vanished. I would not be visiting anymore. I'd be like, you know, the creepy uh, man with uh, the powdered wig reading at night is not my jam. Not into it. But you want to buy a haunted house. So wouldn't you be visiting again? Because you want to see this. Not in my bedroom. There's boundaries. The ghosts don't care which room you're sleeping in. You don't know. You don't know. You don't Find know. Nice what do you know about ghosts? Marge doesn't come in your bedroom and chill on your bed with you, does she? Not that I'm aware of, but she might. Well, if she starts waking you up at night, then I think that's fair to be like, get the fuck out of my room, Marge. I do often wake up for no reason in our house because I hear sounds, but oh, well. <laughs> So overall, this house, though, it seemed like the ghosts inside of it were pretty friendly because there's another piece that I thought was so cute. At times, they also left gifts for big events. And the examples that she talked about was when Cynthia got married, they found a pair of tiny silver tongs, but like no one brought them. They don't know where they came from. And then it was kind of solidified that it's gifts because when their first grandchild was born, they found a golden baby ring randomly. Everyone knows that babies love jewelry. They said baby ring. I don't know what that is. Precious metals are important to babies. I assume like a teething ring. I don't know. Oh, I thought you meant like like a pinky ring. Like it was like a ring for their hands. No. <laughs> I don't know. She called it a golden baby ring. I don't know what that is, but they found it. I love that I went to hand ring. Like, here, baby. You can't give babies things they would choke on, but like jewelry is fine. <laughs> oh, Lindsay, you silly goose. So no one could explain where any of these items came from. It sounded like it was a big topic of like, where could these have been? But they appeared when these big events happened. So they took it as ghost gifts, which is something that I don't think I've ever really heard of other than like finding items that were lost and things like that. But like full on new items is interesting. So my Nana, her thing was like turtles because my grandfather would give her turtles. Oh, that's cute. That was just like the gift he would always give her. It was like turtle this or turtle that. And because he gave her so many gifts, she had a lot of turtles. So then everybody thought that she liked turtles. So everyone bought her turtle things. So she <laughs> I had love that. so much turtle stuff. But there were big milestone events in our lives after she passed. And we would find turtle figurines and stuff at them that we'd never seen before. That's cute. That like no one in the family fessed up to, which someone could have been doing it to be like, she's here and like, just didn't want to say anything. Yeah. But what's interesting is so that she had so many turtle things that my dad handled a lot of her estate. He donated a lot of the turtle things. And so he knew what had been donated. And some of the things that were showing up were things that he had given to she like, the, like, like different dare place. You she was like, this is my goodwill. turtle. Yes. No, it wasn't Goodwill. It was like, I want to think it was like a turtle museum. Oh, that's cute, though. And yeah, yeah, because it was like little tchotchkes kind of things, not massive things. But there was turtles that would show up. That's cute. And there were other things that would end up in places that didn't make any sense. That's a cute story. I love that. Yeah. I hope you find more turtle stuff now. Always. So unfortunately, this would be sad. I'm like, I would be here forever then if they were like friendly and, you know, bonding with the family. But about 25 years after moving in, the Ackleys decided it was time to downsize. And they listed the home with Richard Ellis. And a young couple, Jeffrey and Patricia Sambofsky, seemed really excited about the home. And they moved into the contract phase of buying the home. Per Cynthia, Helen's daughter, and the realtor, Helen did indeed disclose on a few occasions with the Samboskis that the home was haunted. Ellis, the realtor, even said that he remembers Ellen refusing to sign her end of the contract until she was able to talk to the couple about the hauntings. So like he has a vivid memory of that. Fair. Jeffrey and Patricia claimed that they were never told and they only found out through a contractor or possibly a neighbor, I've seen both, that the house was super haunted. They said if they had known that it was haunted, that they would have never wanted to purchase the home. Unfortunately, the conversations about the hauntings or the alleged conversations were never documented. So no one knows if that actually happened. 
Because of what they learned, though, the Stambovskis wanted to pull out of their purchase contract. However, they had already paid their down payment, so it got a little tricky. Even accounting for inflation, if it's a $1.7 million house, that was likely, even then, a big down payment. Yeah. So this happened between the contract and the closing time that they wanted to pull out. Also to note, the purchasers were not local, so there wasn't really a way for them to know stories about the home unless they just happened to read that Reader's Digest. It wasn't like, you know, if a local wanted to buy the house, they're like, yeah, we've heard of that house. We've seen it. We've heard the stories, everything. They weren't. So at this time, it was the early 90s. There wasn't internet, Google, Reddit, anything like that for them to find this information out. Yeah. So Helen was told about them pulling out and that they were filing an action against her. And what they were claiming was fraudulent misrepresentation of a material condition of the home, a.k.a. she didn't mention that the house was haunted and that these stories, Helen's stories, devalued the home. And just as a reminder, right, these stories were published and locals were very familiar with this home and the hauntings, right? Because even before Helen moved in, people knew. Yeah. The Stambovskis also wanted to recover their $32,000 deposit. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. At first, the court dismissed the complaint and said that the sellers did not have a duty to disclose the haunted house stories. So basically, this wasn't a material fact in what they thought it was, right? Because this would be precedent setting. And basically, it was up to the buyer to ask every question before purchasing the house. So when you're buying a house, right, you can ask any question you want to ask about it. And for example, if the family would have said, is the house haunted? We don't want to live in a haunted house. And they lied. Then it would have been a material fact at that first step because they made it clear that they were asking about it. But they didn't have to voluntarily give it up. And keep in mind, right, like there's big steps in purchasing a home. You have to get an appraisal and you often have to get an inspection depending on the type of loan. So those checks are already happening and lots of big things are already being checked off. So it's not as though they knew nothing about the house. They'd already undergone reviews of the home. Right. New York operated under caveat emptor, which is Latin for buyer beware. So obviously the Stamboskis were not happy with that. They appealed and they brought it to the New York State Supreme Court. And Justice Rubin, along with the other two judges on the Supreme Court, disagreed with the previous dismissal. So all of the reviews we talked about, right, that were done to the house were physical things that you could see. So keep that in mind. The majority opinion was that in this situation, caveat emptor shouldn't be how they're determining this because it's not as though they would know to ask for this by a visual inspection of the house. Right. This wasn't something that a professional in the normal course of purchasing a house would test for. Most people don't have a, like a paranormal team doing a scan of the home. <laughs> oh my gosh. what we could do. <laughs> Amanda's face lit up. <laughs> she has never been more excited about anything. We are now True Creeps <laughs> LLC. We are a travel agency. We are a paranormal home inspector team inspector team yeah could you imagine though that would be so fun that would be incredibly fun and i'm surprised this doesn't exist already because could you imagine no ghost certified no there, <laughs> there's not hella ghosts up in here certified <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that'll be on the back of the shirt yeah yeah ghost inspector team <gasps> oh my gosh ghost inspector team <laughs> get <laughs> Get ghosts out. Get gone. Get gone. <laughs> done and done. Get certified. Quit your job tomorrow. We have things to do. <laughs> <laughs> Once you move. Anyway, so the Supreme Court was like, this isn't a physical defect that you would have seen. So we're not using copy adapter. Also, the defendant, Helen, couldn't deny that the house was haunted because, one, she'd publicly called it haunted. <laughs> And secondly, the way in which she did it was published. So you could pull up a page and be like, do you see here where you talked about? Yeah. <laughs> so ultimately, the New York Supreme Court ruled that the home was haunted and that the Ackleys had the responsibility to disclose this to future buyers. Also, the Stamboskis were allowed to rescind their contract and get their deposit back. And some of the reasons that they gave for this ruling was that, again, they wouldn't have known about the ghosts from the standard course of inspections and through the standard home buying process, and that the ghost reputation affected the home in the community. So 
you know, say you're the type of person who you want to like get to know your neighbors and have parties and do all these things. No one's going to come into your house if they think it's haunted. Well, some people might not want to come to your house if they know it's haunted. Lame people wouldn't want to come to your house because it's haunted. Lame. (laughs) Uh, The court also said it would be unfair to give the seller an advantage over the buyer for a material fact that the buyer could not reasonably discover, which is interesting that they're calling this a material fact. And the other thing that I think is interesting is that it's not just that Helen talked about it, but through publishing it over and over and over, the reputation that already exists, she amplified it. Mm-hmm. It existed when she bought the home, but she was like, y'all, listen up. There's hella ghosts in here. And, you know, that makes it a little bit different than just, oh, I think there's ghosts here. Right. And you thinking it in the neighborhood kind of knowing about it. Right. Even if she would have just told her family or close friends or neighbors, like, I think there's a ghost here. She later could say, I was just, you know, like it was a joke. Yeah. Or, you know, there's a cold spot and we figured out it was the AC or the window was open, something. But she published them nationally. Yes. With a lot of specifics. Yeah. And I love that they were like, because of this particular situation, we have to rule that this is a haunted home. Yeah. (laughs) And it has to be disclosed. Well, and also like this is now obviously this precedent and it's discussed in law schools. And this (laughs) the nickname for this case is the Ghostbusters ruling, which how fun. I love it so much. But this house is awesome. And it's pretty. Its location is perfect. Because of that, supposedly, it has changed hands several times over the years. No one talks about the ghosts. But why are they selling it so much if it's such a great home? Fair. Very fair. The rumors still stand, but these people haven't really discussed any new stories. Interestingly, some pretty big names have owned this property in the last few years. In the late 90s, Adam Brooks lived there. And he was the co-writer of Practical Magic, the movie. I need you to know that one of my favorite authors is Alice Hoffman, who wrote the book Practical Magic and the surrounding books in that universe. If you are looking for a story to weep through, you must read this series. It's just so well written and it's just so beautiful and tragic and witchy. It's a fun time. I love it. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering if pieces of the movie might be from his home. I haven't seen the movie in years, but like I'm looking at some of the stills from it and like kind of same vibe It's in certain stills. I have to go back and watch the movie now. I've recently watched it. I don't see a lot of things that overlap that weren't in the books already, but I could be wrong. Well, I mean, like when he's designing the set. Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Also, you didn't mention this before, but there's a recording room in there. Perfect. I was like, that's where we can record True Creeps. Oh, and I'll tell you why that's probably there, at least in these recent photos of it. So some other big names that have owned this home. The singer-songwriter Ingrid Michaelson had it from 2012 to 2015. I love her. And in an interview, she called the home magical, but did not mention ghosts. Interesting. Mm Mm-hmm. I like her a lot. I had to look up who she was because the name didn't sound familiar. (laughs) But yeah, I I thought that was nice. I found like a little interview snippet and I'm like, okay, why magical? Why did you use that term? Another one, and this might be the recording studio too, is Modest Yahoo. Oh. Owned it for four years until 2019. Hmm. I don't know much about them. I know like one song. So that might be the recording room. Maybe it was his or hers. But interesting that through the years, it's been pretty big names that have had this home. And no one's really talking about it being haunted anymore. But like the average person probably doesn't want it to be haunted. But maybe yeah. it also could be inspiration. Maybe that's why it's attracting these type of people, because it's inspiration for songs and movies and stuff. I will say that there's a different vibe in a place that's haunted. It just feels like it has a little sparkle, a little spice yeah, in the air versus a place that's fresh and unhaunted. Unhaunted. How boring. So kind of fun. What do you think of this house? Would you own it? Would you like it? Um, I mean, again, yes, because I'm doing haunted tourism now. (laughs) But this one's a bit more pricey, but it's stunning. Yes. This house is so beautiful that I wonder if I could like handle the hauntings because it's just so fucking pretty. Right? That backyard. And the views are just so gorgeous. Yeah. You know, when you look at a picture, a lot of the time the main photo is like the front of the house. This one is the backyard looking at the river. Yeah. Almost every time. Yeah. So, so pretty. That wraparound porch. The stairs are gorgeous. I love a wraparound porch. Just there's little details here and there. Like you can tell that they modernized some of it, but some of the old details they kept. And I love it. Yeah. It's just so, so pretty. So 
Let's talk a little bit about disclosures of hauntings, because that was a big question I had when we were buying our first home is like, is that something that needs to be told to me? What if there's like 20 murders in this home? Do I have to figure it out? Do people tell me about it? How do we navigate this? So I thought it would be fun to share. So disclosure laws change from state to state. I found a really fun map that you can click on your state and it'll tell you a little bit more about your particular state and what the laws include. Hmm. Most of the states require a seller to make certain disclosures about the property condition or any physical defects, like an issue with the roof or something like that. And also, obviously, depending on your loan and everything, you're going to do like an inspection and appraisal and all of that fun stuff, too, that would tell you anything physically wrong. But some states require a seller to disclose emotional defects, too. Hmm. And that's things like deaths on the property. If methamphetamines were being made there and the really fun one hauntings. But from what we saw, some only require death disclosures for a limited time frame unless specifically asked. So like as an example, California, right? California requires that any death on the property must be disclosed if it happened within the last three years. But the seller must disclose any known death that happened in the home if the buyer asks. So if it was five years ago. They don't have to tell you unless you ask for it. So ask these questions. Yeah. Well, I mean, if it matters to you. Yes. It might not. So murders on the property have different rules altogether. If there was a violent death versus a peaceful one, this can be considered something that can affect the home value. And because of this, sellers in most states are required to disclose if a murder happened on the property, which feels pretty fair because, I don't know, I don't think I would want to live in a place where somebody was full on murdered. Yeah. Yeah. I, I might have a little bit of reservation. Yeah, I mean, especially if that person wasn't caught. Oh, God. You know? Ugh. Yeah. I did say, too, that some states specifically mention paranormal activity in their real estate disclosure laws. Mm-hmm. And I loved that. Yeah. Also, they just don't want to deal with it in the courts. It's not a good use of court time. I just loved that there are court documents talking about ghosts. You know, like, that's just not a topic that you'd really see in any law document. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, you don't typically hear about the paranormal and something so formal. Right. While we were looking up these disclosures and everything, I thought it would be fun to ask a realtor because I'm like, am I the only crazy one in Arizona that asked all these questions? (laughs) So we have a community Facebook page and there's a realtor named Brenda who's on ours and she's super sweet and does a lot for our community. So I'm like, hey, Brenda. (laughs) Hey, Brenda. Tell me if anyone has asked you about this in your years of doing this. She said personally, she hasn't had people ask if a house was haunted, but she has in the past had people ask her if like deaths occurred in the home. So I thought that was interesting because that was like some of the first questions I asked (laughs) when we were looking at houses. When I was buying, we asked that and then we also researched every single address before we went. Fair. So with that being said, if you are buying a house and are concerned with living in a spooky house, do as much research as you can. And look up your specific state laws to determine if that is something that needs to be disclosed or if you have to ask or if you're kind of on your own and you need to figure it out yourself. There are some websites that help too that I found this first one when I was buying this house and it's called diedinhouse.com. I don't like that you have to pay for it though. I don't like it, but you can see if you follow them on social media and stuff, they do pick a house here and there and talk about like the history of it. Okay, I kind of like that. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Another one that I didn't know until recently is called House Creep. And thank you, Renee, my dog sitter, for telling me about this one, because now you can just like put in addresses. And if that address doesn't come up, it's kind of like a weird website, but like you can see houses in that area. Like if you put a city or a zip code or something, yeah, it'll tell you ones with weird stuff that have happened or like police reports and include that address for some of them. Hmm. So it's kind of fun. Yeah. So what I want to know from everyone and from you is when you were buying a home or if you plan on ever buying a home again, is this something that you would consider? Yes, I think. I mean, I would just generally say, ask every question you can. Have as full of a picture as you possibly can going in to buying a house because it's such a big fiscal commitment Mm -hmm. and it's not something you can easily get out of. And in this case, they won, right? But if they had lost, they would be out thousands of dollars in legal fees and their deposit or they'd be living in the house yeah and it's not easy so i would say if it's something that matters i would generally 
be like, yes, go look. And also just for your own knowledge. Now, that being said, if I was buying a property as an investment property and I was never going to live in it, I would not ask because then I would know. And when I sold it, I would have to answer it. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. It was a big deal when we did. But I think also some of the houses that we toured, I know I've said it in other, I think our ghost episode before, but like we walked in and I'm like, yikes, this house has something bad going on. No, thank you. And our realtor looked at me like, what is wrong with you? This checks every box. And I'm like, okay, thank you. Let's go. Okay, <laughs> bye. To be here. <laughs> but my fear was like, yeah, when we bought our home, like our first home, we would have been those people in the horror movie, right? Like, we're stuck here. Yay us. The ghosts are crazy and we just hang out with them now. The ghosts are ghosting. They're ghosting hard. <laughs> <laughs> but that was our first house. I think if we were to move, I'm okay. If there's a presence here, but they're pretty chill, I'd be like, okay, cool. That's fine. Take the rocking chair away, though. I do not want that. Get that rocking chair out of here. One of the main reasons we bought this particular house is because it was a new build. And I know land can be haunted and all of that. But at least like in my head, that cuts the crazy haunting potential down by at least 50%. These were outdoor ghosts. Those are outdoor ghosts, yes. But I would really be interested to hear if anyone else has asked any of these questions when buying their house. And like, if something was answered as like a yes, like, yes, people have died here. or Yes, we think there are ghosts here. Did that dissuade you from buying the home? I love these stories. Yeah. When I was buying my house, I was like, don't care. <laughs> and didn't even occur to me to ask. And I knew that it was for sale because a person died. Mm -hmm. like specifically. <laughs> so I was like, mm, if she's here, she's here. <laughs> right. But like you said, there's a difference between like a peaceful death and a murder too. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. There really is. When you're looking at houses now, I want you to have that in the back of your head. Are you buying a super duper haunted house? Because some of these ones, especially the first one we talked about, has been on the market every couple of years. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe you want a spooky house. Maybe you want to go into spooky tourism. That's your new thing. But we get royalties for the good ideas. We get free stays. I'll just take a free stay. <laughs> That's fair. In a non-murderous ghost house. Mm -hmm. Again, we have a very long description of the first house in our walkthrough after the outro, if you care to listen. But these are our spooky homes. <laughs> I love it. Also, we're taking the next two weeks off, just a heads up, for our summer break, but we'll be back after that. If you still want to chat with us, we'll still be available in the Bat Bonfire or in our Patreon Discord. And with that, have a great weekend. Thanks for creeping with us. Thanks for listening. And as always, a special thank you to our patrons who support us via Patreon. Please see the link in our show notes to learn more about how you, yes you, can begin to haunt the dump guard vortexes, or even become a scorching Sasquatch. Ooh. Also in our show notes, you can find the link to our website, more information on our sources, our social media handles, and our merch store. We'd love for you to keep creeping with us. So if you like this episode, please subscribe, rate, review, and share the show with your fellow creeps and or ghosts. I beg of you. <laughs>you were pissed at the placement of the fridge and the oven. Okay. You're making it sound like it's not that big of a deal. But I want you to pic picture this. Sicily, 19 whatever. No, you're in a kitchen, right? First what? off, let's talk. It's, it's a long kitchen, which is fine. And it's all white. Again, that's fine. So long kitchen, long ways. There's a whole bunch of cabinets to the right. And it's actually the entire wall. And then against the wall on either side are the appliances like the oven and the fridge. However, they are fully disconnected from the cabinets. And <laughs> the way that they are situated is like you are supposed to use the cabinets next to them, which is not possible because it looks like it's about one and a quarter feet from that, which is roughly... Mm, I want to say maybe a third of a 12 year old boy. That's fair. But like, I'm just doing, I'm doing loose 12 year old boy math over here. But the oven is just loose. It's just a loose oven. It is. And then you scroll to the next photo and it's just a loose fridge. And then there's another part. This is not as important because you could fix it. But I love the idea of cabinets that you can see into because they're either generally open or is there is glass. But the glass cabinets are not the same glass cabinets. They don't match. <laughs> and that Told hurts you, it me It seems like a rush deeply. job to me. Yes. 
But <laughs> I've also lived in a place with a loose oven. Like my first apartment had a loose oven and was it also like a long a loose oven. Well, what else like would you thing. call it? It's a loose, it's a free range range. <laughs> <laughs> but look, a loose oven is whim whamsy and stressful. And looking at this kitchen, it gives me anxiety. Also, there's no is there like a hood? It doesn't look like there might be a vent behind the light, but there's no hood. You know why? Because it's a loose fucking oven. She has opinions. Yeah, there's a there's a lot going on. Do you see the rogue light above the oven and above the fridge too? That one's kind of fun. Yeah, they're weird. You know that kitchen's dark as fuck. You're in there at night. <laughs> That's why they won't come at night. Yeah, I was like, they don't want you to come at night because they don't want you to see how dark this kitchen is with its loose appliances. <laughs> well, all right. So the detail work is really pretty in this home. There's a lot of um, molding around windows and doors. The front door is gorgeous. There's like a, what do you call it? Oh, a princess tower. Okay, tower. Tower works great. So, also, it has like a really pretty tower. Princess tower. And I think it, the princess tower. Um, the, you, the proper term. Thank you, realtor Lindsay. Use its architecturally formal name, princess tower. It has a princess tower. No. But what I noticed, and I didn't see it in the photos, I sat there and did the whole 3D tour of this home. And something that caught my attention is the closets and some of the bedrooms that are open, they give me the creeps. I feel like it is, here's the best I could describe it, okay? I feel like it is one panel away from revealing a weird, mysterious box with some creepy hidden trinket in it. And of course, the box has a mirror because why not? And like, you're looking at the trinket and then in the mirror, you notice that there's like a woman behind you watching you from that closet in the mirror. Like, that's what I see happening when you look in the closets. It's very detailed. Well, here, like, first off, what Amanda's leaving out is when you go upstairs, there's a loose <laughs> closet immediately, like, to your right. Like, I'm talking, it's not I'm not on, even talking about that closet right now. I know. It's, you <laughs> miss this closet fully. And what I'm saying is, like, you're going up the stairs, and as you're going up, level with no floor in the house is a room or a closet that... It doesn't let you see in. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a weird thing. Yeah. What's in that fucking room? It's either something sinister or it's a water heater. I haven't decided which yet. If it was a water heater, they need to change the doorknob because the doorknob isn't for a water heater. It's for a room filled with bones or money. A secret. I'm trying to get into the room, but I'm bad at using this. So it's just taking me else. It's just taking it took me, me into a that while. Weird little room at the top of the stairs because when you get to the top of the stairs, there's like a two by two room where you just look out onto the property. Yes, that's definitely for the ghosts. They were like, "Can you give us a looking spot? I need some place to look and wait for my husband to come home from the war." Well, go to the room all the way. Like if you're walking furthest away from the um, stairs. Amanda, I can barely function this. <laughs> I don't know why you think I can go anywhere I want to. But I'm in one of the rooms. Don't ask me which one. I think it's... This is going at the end. I am across from where the bathroom with the blue shower curtain is. All right, let me go to the bathroom. There's a radiator directly behind the door, which means that you can't open the closet fully. Yeah, well, that's not the room. That closet's closed. You can't go in that. Go across to that the room. That closet's closed, but I'm just saying the fact that, one, you can't see inside of it, suspicious. And two, it's got these weird, it's the fixtures that give me the jeebs, the heebie-jeebs. Which one do you want me to go into? Go in the room across from that. Okay. So not the bathroom, but the room next the to it. The one that's in the princess tower? Yes. The radiator there's in a weird space, too. And then stand right when you walk in and look at the weird closet. Like, I feel like one of those panels for sure has a weird trinket in it. Okay. Well, first off, it has a chandelier. I need to mention I that. Mean, yeah. Oh. I mean, need- oh. That's-, that's a murder closet, Amanda, right? Amanda, I need you to give full details. You need to start with this is this room is suspiciously wooden. <laughs> and I mean that in the truest sense of the word is that it is suspicious. Viciously wooden. So I said it was one panel away from revealing <laughs> yeah, a weird it's, trinket box. It's all fucking panels. It's, <laughs> this okay, so this closet, okay. I'm just, just a few things. First off, it matches the weird room at the top of the stairs. So it's like 
two and a half by two and a half feet in like a square. Except that, say you're if you're looking like straight at it, the top right corner has a triangle taken out of it. So that right angle at the top right is just like a piece of wood that goes sideways. It looks like insulation stuff is behind it. I don't know why that's like that. That doesn't make any sense. But the rest of it, it's all planks of wood. Like it looks like hardwood floors, but on the walls. (laughs) Of only the closet. Of only the closet. That's why it's suspiciously wooden. And then that area that I was talking about where it has that chunk taken out of it, there's a light switch on it. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense. And then there's like old timey drawers that are underneath and like built in. But the room is suspiciously wooden and it has so many planks that there's definitely there has to be a trinket behind one of those. For sure. Yeah. And I would actually say a trinket or a old doll that is somehow pristine. (laughs) Name Christine. You're right. You're right. It's one of the two. Fucking right. And actually... The doll might be hanging from the top of that room. Like, it's just sitting there waiting for you to come in and look right on up. When you take the panel off it, it mysteriously just falls. Like, it's been hanging for, you know, since the 1800s, and then it just falls. Like, it falls, but when it lands, it lands in, like, a superhero pose. It doesn't look like it should, but it does for some reason. I had it that it rolls to your feet, and then it opens its eyes. And then like, cackles at you and risky business <laughs> slides out of the room. No, the lady will come up behind you and do that. No, that's she's she's sometimes in the doll. She's sometimes in the doll. Amanda, do you have radi I'm not done, I'm sorry. Do you have radiators there? No. Do you know what a radiator is? I mean I see it in the photos. Okay, so radiators are metal and they have hot fucking water in them. And that's what heats the room. So those are fucking scalding. Mm -hmm. Somewhere between really hot and scalding. Whenever you see them, I want you to think this is too hot to touch. And they're all over the place. They're all over the place. Those are no touches. (laughs) Just like a child. (laughs) Those are no no's. Also, these windows could use some love. Oh, my God. (laughs) Did you? (laughs) Okay. The other room, not the one that I was in before, but the one that's like kind of next to yours. Yes. It has the other side to the suspiciously wooden closet. And that one's, it's not wooden. They put drywall over it. Yeah. It looks so normal. No, it's not dry. Well, it it is drywall, but it's not like the other one is just unfinished. It's finished in a weird fucking way. Because it was too difficult. They've got to hide that trinket doll. Yes. Well, actually... Another weird thing, that room doesn't have a door. Door's full on gone. But if you look up, there's a weird attic crawl space thing. And above the door has the weird windows above the doors. Yeah, well, I think that's for ventilation. Yeah. But like, still, that's fucking weird. That shit's opening in the middle of the night while you're trying to sleep. Oh, for sure. For sure. (laughs) Oh, none of them have doors. I guess I didn't miss a lot. Like, wait, 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 wait. Well, no, no. Fireplace bedroom has one, which well, let's, while we're here, elip- let's talk about bedroom. all of the fireplaces and how the tops of them show wear and tear of fireplaces like they're black and filled with soot. But the bottoms are fucking white. Every fucking fireplace is like that. The top one looks heavily damaged. Also, it's like concrete. I like that whoever took the picture of this room ducked out of the mirror. Oh, for, yeah. They did that in all the mirrors. So you just see the camera? Yeah. This is the first time I noticed it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. I've been in this house a lot this week, wandering around. <laughs> Inside. She's been in this house. <laughs> what is that weird little nook? That's the looking spot so you can oversee the backyard. I'm just obsessed with the the front door. I love it. It is beautiful. When you step through to the, I, I assume, dining room, maybe, there's like this weird walkway to the kitchen but it's like abnormally tiny well it's curved (laughs) it's like they added like to me what looks like they did plaster on the walls and then they made indentations like it was tile and then they like made a weird arch into the kitchen you got to see it to see it yeah it looks like there's an addition on this house too because there's like windows from the kitchen to what would have been the outside before because it's made of brick so that's probably why some of the bedrooms are weird too is because there's an addition i wonder if the ghosts are in the addition too 
Oh, for sure. Like, it's they're free roaming ghosts. They do what they want. They're like, oh, more space for activities. Done <laughs> and done. That's why they kept the floors, so she can just slide in. <laughs> yeah, they got this risky business slide in. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because you know what? The newer... Hold on, I'm trying to remember where I am in this house. Yeah, the old part is the weird, creepy old bedrooms, and then the addition looks like it doesn't go fully upstairs. Well, and also, like, the addition... I like that you can see, like, what was the outside of the house. Yes, inside. Like, I like that in an addition. I think that's kind of... That's cool. Yeah. I mean, it's a cool house, for sure. It would be really fun to make it like a haunted Airbnb. That would be awesome. I would totally stay here. Because what else do you do when the ghosts are popping? When they're popping. It's also very close to Sleepy Hollow, which is like a 10 to 154 minutes away drive. (laughs) (laughs) Depends on traffic that day. It's wild. (laughs) Oh, I I take it myself. (laughs) She's literally crying. (laughs) I am. I am. New York operated under caveat emptor, which is Latin for buyer beware. I wasn't familiar with that so much, but I was like, why does that sound so familiar? Like, I'm not a realtor. I don't know. I've bought one house. No idea. It was bothering me. It took me a good few minutes. And I'm like, why do I know that term? And then I figured out that it was, there's a band called Greeley Estates, and that was their EP name. So scene kids know this from 2005. And I just wanted to tell you, Lindsay, yeah. bullet belts forever. I love that for you. You wear that. I don't want to wear a belt at all, ever. <laughs> Especially not one made of bullets. So comfortable. Scene kids. Scene, scene kids. kids. She's just so cool, guys. I was so fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, listen up. There's hella ghosts in here. 